Countless BYD sedans are discovered in a forsaken parking garage, dispersed across multiple floors, each vehicle cloaked in a blanket of dust. In another metropolis, a parking lot dubbed the BYD Ocean houses hundreds of BYD cars, meticulously arranged in rows of 20, a sight that truly boggles the mind. These dust-covered BYD vehicles, featuring thought-after models such as Qin Plus, Song, and Tang, come in a dazzling array of colors, all neatly parked in orderly rows. <laughs> In contrast, BYD sales representatives staunchly maintain that no cars are readily available, insisting that customers endure a three months wait for delivery following payment. Reports have emerged that BYD has begun to scale back production at factories nationwide. Employees now work a mere four days per week, clocking in eight hours per day, and receive a modest base salary of 1,900 yuan. It appears that BYD is well aware of the overarching downward trend plaguing the entire automotive market. In recent months, they have been propping up prices, enticing more individuals to purchase their vehicles at premium rates. As March rolled around, BYD finally yielded, lowering its prices. The pure electric Han EV, with a price tag between 200,000 and 300,000 yuan, now boasts a maximum discount of 20,000 yuan, while the hybrid Han model enjoys a 7,000 yuan markdown. The older Qin EV model sees a price reduction of 12,000 yuan, now starting at 129,800 yuan, and other select new models also benefit from a 1,000 yuan discount. However, these policies no longer appeal to consumers. The cars are still lined up, and if a car is not sold for a month, how much more interest will be added to the account? Therefore, various 4S stores have started to offer discounts on cars. Now what's lacking are buyers. During the first two months of the year, the overall automotive industry was in the doldrums. Among the top 15 domestic passenger car manufacturers in China from January to February, only BYD managed to maintain year-on-year -year growth, albeit at a slowing pace. The remaining manufacturers all experienced comprehensive losses, with some factories witnessing sales volume reductions of nearly 50%. Although the data for March is not yet available, gasoline and new energy vehicles have both begun to experience crazy price reductions since March. Is skyrocketing productivity and plummeting manufacturing costs prompting manufacturers to engage in fierce price competitions? In truth, it isn't as simple as that. Insiders reveal that the primary cause of price reductions is a lack of funds in the market. Research demonstrates that banks do possess deposits, yet these funds are not in the hands of the common people, but are concentrated among a select few. According to a market revenue report by China Securities, if one were to compare using the international GDP and personal income ratio, 95% of Chinese citizens would currently be classified as impoverished. A mere 1% of Chinese society may possess over 95% or even 99% of its wealth. These affluent individuals cannot possibly spend such vast sums of money, nor purchase a multitude of automobiles. As for the ordinary masses, the desire to own a car exists, but they lack the funds to acquire one, or are too apprehensive to make such a purchase. Entering 2023, the general public in China increasingly anticipates a poorer future, a trend even more pronounced than in 2022. Between January and February of 2022, retail sales of passenger cars in China amounted to 3.32 million units a mere 2.4% decline compared to 2021. However, 2023 paints a drastically different picture. According to data released by the China Passenger Car Association on March 6, retail sales of passenger cars in the first two months totaled over 2.5 million units, a year-on-year -year decrease of 20.1%, with a fifth of sales evidently vanishing. 
It must be said that the first two months of 2023 saw a substantial increase in poverty compared to 2022, causing a collective plunge in optimism for the future. People either have no money or are too fearful to consume, even if they possess some funds. This phenomenon can be corroborated by data released by the National Bureau of Statistics for February. In February 2023, China's CPI or Consumer Price Index rose by a mere one percent year on year, far below global standards, with an increase of 1.1 percent less than the previous month. The PPI or Producer Price Index decreased by 1.4 percent year on year. With a decline 0.6 percent larger than the previous month, this indicates a worsening consumer market with fewer people purchasing goods. With the decline in demand, prices cannot rise, as existing products fail to sell and production companies are unable to move inventory. They naturally reduce purchases. Raw materials can only be sold to businesses at lower prices, leading to a drop in the prices of industrial raw materials. The entire economy finds itself in a state of depression. There are many reasons why the general public lacks money, among which the decrease in income and increase in unemployment are two very important factors. There is no solution in sight. This can also be seen from the government department reform report presented at the two sessions. The central government is also significantly reducing the income of government workers and streamlining staffing. In these trying times of widespread economic stagnation, the month of March has ushered in a colossal price reduction across the entire range of Dongfeng vehicles. The mainstream model, the Dongfeng Citroen, once priced at a lofty 210,000 yuan, now offers a whopping 90,000 yuan discount, making it available for a mere 120,000 yuan. The Hubei provincial government, in an act of tremendous generosity, has lent its vital support to this price-slashing endeavor. For each Dongfeng vehicle sold, the government kindly contributes a 45,000 yuan subsidy, matched by an equal reduction from Dongfeng itself. But wait, the government's 45,000 yuan contribution isn't cold hard cash; rather, they've graciously forgiven Dongfeng's 45,000 yuan loan. This whirlwind of price reductions, ranging from 50,000 to 90,000 yuan, has swept through the automotive retail industry, leaving consumers eagerly anticipating similar moves from other manufacturers. Insiders speculate that provincial and municipal governments may follow in Hubei's footsteps, diving headfirst into this automotive discount frenzy. Employing the advantages of their governmental prowess, they could bolster sales of local pillar automotive brands, ensuring their region's automotive industries thrive and prosper. Not every company shall be so fortunate. Foreign-funded enterprises, joint ventures, or purely private automotive companies without local government support shall find themselves hard-pressed to withstand such fierce competition. As price sensitivity continues to play an increasingly critical role in consumer decisions, how will these companies weather the inevitable storm of discounts? Beseeching the heavens for a miraculous escape route, their only recourse appears to be relentless price reduction. But this is a sure path to oblivion. Emerging brands such as Xping Motors and WM Motor face a severe financial crisis, teetering on the brink of collapse. If they cannot turn their sales around, they may well be headed for doom. Furthermore, the upstream and downstream service companies affiliated with these firms shall undoubtedly struggle to stay afloat. Financial institutions accepting mortgage vehicles as loan collateral shall tread even more cautiously in the future. The assessed value of mortgaged vehicles could be used to purchase new cars. For instance. A 200,000 yuan vehicle taken to a financial institution for mortgage appraisal may be valued at 160,000 yuan. The mortgagor, armed with 160,000 yuan in funds, could then purchase the same new vehicle for a mere 120,000 yuan, leaving the mortgaged car with the financial institution to rot. And thus, these vehicles would transform into unsellable heaps of scrap metal. Furthermore, behind this tempest of price reductions lies a complex web of political and economic factors. 
the Hubei provincial government's decision to implement such a significant economic policy must have involved prior communication with the central government and relevant departments of the state council. Then why, one might wonder, would they engage in a short-term strategy to boost Dongfeng's sales and invigorate the province's pillar industry, whilst potentially causing severe long-term ramifications for the entire automotive sector? Well, insiders suggest that Dongfeng Group, in a rather precarious position, has seen its cumulative sales from January to February this year plummet by 49% amounting to a mere 296,796 vehicles. Should this trend continue, Dongfeng Group could face imminent collapse. The downfall of such a substantial automotive enterprise would have horrifying consequences for both the livelihoods of Hubei's residents and Dongfeng's crucial role in China's national development. For Hubei, already burdened with a faltering economy, this would be nothing short of a catastrophe. Faced with such a dire economic landscape, the central government has had little choice but to permit Hubei province to implement short-term promotional and subsidy measures, which, while seemingly beneficial at the moment, could ultimately have grave repercussions on the entire industry. This is all in an effort to salvage the province's pillar industry, the Dongfeng Group. In truth, this strategy resembles a desperate attempt to do the so-called quench one's thirst with poison, and it may very well become the new normal for China's future development. Given the myriad of challenges facing the nation's political and economic landscape, President Xi Jinping may only have the capacity to address the immediate crises while neglecting long-term perils. This price-slashing storm, then, is indeed a thought-provoking phenomenon. It begs the question, as the government prioritizes short-term economic gains at the expense of long-term development, where does the future lie for the people of China?